Um, finally, let's look at lighting, and this will be the last thing I talk about in this video. Lighting, I just want to warn you, is a little more technical than these other terms. And I'm going to ask you um, to commit some of these uh, lighting terms to memory, and I'm going to test you on them, because I think they're, they're fairly important. And once you think about lighting in this way, it's going to do a, a lot of uh, good for your ability to do film analysis. So one term I want you to know is three-point lighting. Three-point lighting is a classical Hollywood convention in which we have three lights surrounding a character, each serving a different function. A backlight comes from above, a key light comes diagonally from the front, and a fill light comes from near the camera. So we can think about those things here. Key light is the main light source. In this image, the key light is the only thing that we see. Therefore, there's a very heavy, heavy shadow on this person's face. The light is coming from here, and that's the light source. The fill light is doing exactly what the name says. It fills in the shadow, right? It's very clear where the key light remains, but now we can actually see the other side of his face. The backlight, probably the most subtle thing, is actually super useful for making sure a character sticks out from the background. Um, the only difference between these two images, of course, is uh, the hat, right, um, and the shoulder. Um, those things kind of fade into the background, but now they're strikingly pushed out against the background. We can see that clearly going on in uh, this image, right? Um, these crisp lines that make sure that uh, Jimmy Stewart can be seen uh, against the darker background. Another set of terms that I want you to know is high key versus low key lighting. High key and low key lighting are all about the ratio uh, between the key light and the fill light. Um, in high key lighting, there's a ratio, a ratio such that there's not much contrast. Um, in other words, um, you try to have a lot of fill light, so you don't have shadows, right? You can not see any shadows on the faces of these characters. This is high-key lighting. Um, classic. Low-key lighting um, means that you're going to see uh, lighter lights and darker darks. In other words, you have more contrast. Um, an easy way to think about this is high-key means low contrast. Low-key means high contrast. Low-key doesn't just mean low amount of light. Why? Because this image does not actually um, give us uh, a low key lighting, even though it has a low amount of light. The reason I can say that is because the shadows aren't that starkly different from the highlights. This is not exactly, I would call, a low key light image, despite it not having a lot of light. Um, so that's uh, talking about three point lighting. We can also talk about lighting direction, that is, where a light comes. Um, and what effect that has. So I have this GIF um, that's kind of demonstrating the way in which uh, lighting direction can radically change a person's appearance, right? Um, you have a uh, uh, high direction, you have a side direction, a low direction, and a, another side direction from the left. Um, and I think we can say that these images produce an entirely different appearance for a person. Um, and they have conventions in, in genres and in, um, and in certain ways of making films. So underlighting is often associated with horror films, right? We have that thing, what we do when we're at a campfire and we want to tell a spooky story. We often put a flashlight underneath our face. Why does it make us scary? Honestly, I don't know. But I know that it is a thing that people do. Um, and it does motivate certain elements of spookiness um, that we'll get, say, in the subtle way, in The Shining, right? You can actually tell there's a highlight underneath his nose, underneath his cheeks, and in this very dramatic way, in The Sixth Sense. Top lighting is often associated with glamour, right? And I think you can see that partly because the cheekbones are emphasized in this very famous image of Marlena Dietrich that is very much apparent. Um, backlighting has to do with the fact that uh, light is coming from the back um, and generally will produce a silhouette effect. Um, so when we say that we have a silhouette, which is like an image whose shape is apparent, but whose formal features are kind of um, dark and that can't, can't be distinguished, that has to do with um, where the uh, light is coming from, usually from behind. Um, and we can actually think about uh, lighting as having certain cultural codes beyond genre. Um, lighting also has to do with cultural codes in Hollywood associated with gender norms. Uh, scenario, and she's also getting um, a top light. Right? You can see the shadow um, underneath her cheekbones, but it's not such a harsh shadow. What you're getting is a lot of round light. However, with the man of her dreams, right, still very handsome, and his handsomeness is being signified by the image, 
you're getting a low key light. You can barely see his eyes and you can see this very heavy delineated shadow. Um, it's, it's actually a very common thing that uh, shooting men in the classical Hollywood era entailed a low key system and uh, shooting women in a uh, classical Hollywood era entailed a high key system. There are ways in which this can be kind of subverted and interrogated, but I just want to show you that these codes um, are in fact part of culture and that um, paying attention to them can actually help us do the work of film analysis and in many ways ideological analysis. So low key on the left, high key on the right. Um, what other patterns can we talk about with lighting? We can talk about um, artificial light and natural light. Interestingly, Marie Antoinette is a film that takes place uh, in a world that lacks artificial light. And so it tries to create an emphasis on natural light. The opening shot of the film is in fact um, a dark room that is illuminated um, by a visible light source opening the window. But I guarantee that this is in fact not exactly what's happening on set. Um, I can imagine that there are in fact artificial lights that you can't see. This is merely an impression um, that the film is trying to do to create an impression of realism. And notice all the ways in which natural light becomes this element that you can see as it flows through um, uh, this part of the frame. Uh, or even as you can see these lens flares, which are in effect produced by natural light. And in this case, I don't think it's artificial. I think it's um, quite an actual thing. But the lens flares are there to, to give us a sense of realism, right? To show us that a camera, in fact, did capture these images. Now, I do want to draw your attention uh, to a, a difference. You can think of a film like Barry Lyndon from uh, 1975 by Stanley Kubrick, which didn't tr produce the illusion of uh, natural light. It actually used natural light. And you can see that difference. And look at the way this image is produced. It really does look as if um, the lighting actually comes from the candles. Here, the candles don't look as if they're the only thing lighting the scenario, right? They look ornamental as opposed to fundamental to the lighting that's going on there. Um, and we can just see a few more images of how that looks. We can also think about high key versus low key in Marie Antoinette as conveying a kind of symbolic or at least um, expressive weight, right? This is a very much a high key image, uh, very few shadows that happens earlier in the film when things are going well. One of the most dramatically low key shots happens 